Klaatu, Marada. <laughs> Two hours later. One game I've been particularly looking forward to for years now is Witchfire. Created by Polish developers The Astronauts, comprised of devs who formerly worked for People Can Fly. And that name might not mean much to most, but for those into shooters, you'll recognize them as the same developers behind Painkiller and Bulletstorm. Rumors say they also worked on another title back in 2021, but I can't seem to find any proof of that, so let's just pretend it never existed. Either way though, these guys have classic shooter DNA through and through, and seeing them return to what they do best with Witchfire, it looked really promising. But over the years, this thing's had more personality changes than Miley Cyrus. Skating back and forth on that dark fantasy premise and tone they first showed off back in 2017. And now it's finally been released in early access and on Epic Game Store. That's a shame. And I genuinely don't know how to fully explain how this game feels and plays. I mean, it's kind of like Doom Eternal meets Warhammer. Or if Heretic and Bloodborne had a baby, and that baby was a roguelike extraction shooter. Honestly, it's all just a bit of a jumble, and then once you start playing it, things don't get any simpler, as you're slapped across the face with dozens of mechanics and crushing combat. And I'm still not sure if I really like this game or absolutely hate it, but one thing's for damn certain, and that's that I can't stop playing it. <laughs> I can see why this is so popular. When Witchfire works and all the pieces come together as they're supposed to, you get to experience some really satisfying gunplay, with an unsettling and at times gorgeous backdrop. Now it is worth mentioning that this is in early access and it is being worked on pretty consistently by the developers, so a lot of the stuff I'm bringing up in this video might even be dated by the time you're watching it. Either way though, let's grab that shotgun and revolver and see what Witchfire is all about. Now on premise alone, Witchfire is already pretty damn badass. You're playing as a prayer, a mysterious magic-wielding agent working for the Vatican, sent to places infested with demonic presence to exercise the area the old-fashioned way with your fists and boomstick. You arrive on the Scarlet Coast with barely any supplies, with your mission being to kill a witch. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Only before you can do that, you'll need to defeat its two familiars. One on the Scarlet Coast, and then another one hidden away in Iron Gate Castle. All up there's looking like there's going to be six locations to explore in total, with only the coast and the castle available though in the current build. But even as it is, like right away, the mood is dark, depressing, and hopeless. With an overwhelming feeling of despair, and this sense of foreboding dread that's ever present. The idea is that you start the game under-equipped and under-leveled and can barely hold your own, so it becomes a matter of trying to kill as much stuff as possible to loot that eponymous Witchfire. Which is in essence, that's more or less this game's version of experience points. The catch though, is that when you're killed, all of your Witchfire is lost. Pass. So, you can either use a portal to escape the area and cash in whatever you've accumulated, or stick around and try to kill more enemies to maximize your earnings. You do, however, hold on to Witchfire Shards after death, which are these usable items that go into your inventory. But these are kind of pocket change in comparison to what you get from actual kills. Either way, though, it becomes a really addictive risk versus reward loop, and it definitely preys on people like myself who are too stubborn to know when to quit. To further fuck you over, you'll also get randomly attacked by calamities, which are sanity-affecting events where enemies spawn in and try to overwhelm you. And then obviously too, just the moment-to-moment -moment fights can go south really quickly, and have you staring at that game over screen in the blink of an eye. So I get what they're going for here, and yeah man, I dig it. It's a crushing, unforgiving world that doesn't give two shits about the player. And though you can go back in and collect your remains when you're killed, like even that can be a mission in itself. Oh, One thing I do have to praise as well right off the bat is just how insanely gorgeous this whole thing looks. It really does capture that feeling of being alone and isolated in these formerly populated areas. You really get the sense that you're exploring these locations that have seen some heavy combat. And although the battles have definitely been lost, the war is far from over. The first area you move through is a seaside village, and on the beach you can see these ruined battlements and empty campsites, which obviously served as a refuge for soldiers now long gone. And then, closer to the location of the first boss, the ruins of what looks like some kind of final stand. 
In the second map, you're now inside the castle grounds, another area which is clearly been decimated by conflict and battle, with chunks of the walls missing entirely and the crumbling remains of what was clearly a once thriving community. And this whole area in particular is just strikingly good to look at. So yeah, if all you wanted was a gorgeous dark fantasy setting, well then mission accomplished. And this thing is a real poster child for how good the Unreal Engine 4 can look when it's used properly. Absolutely what you'd expect from the same people who made the vanishing of Ethan Carter. Dear God, it's beautiful. As for the gameplay, well, the way it all works is that you enter an area with your equipped weapons, spells and trinkets. Clear out groups of enemies to level up and make yourself more powerful to then take on the Witch's Familiar, which takes the form of a boss fight. The map highlights areas where groups of enemies linger, and once you've cleared a bunch of these out, the game drops a Witchfire Crystal, which also gives you a randomized upgrade. Now this could be something as simple as increasing your health or stamina, or more specific build buffs like increasing the elemental damage you do with spells. And you can also re-roll these if you don't get the one you want, by finding feathers found in chests. On top of that, chests are also going to contain spare ammo, which you are absolutely going to need, second only to Witchfire Essence, because spending this stuff back at the hub area is the only way to level up your stats. What the game does a really crappy job at explaining as well, is that you need to constantly be researching stuff on the side, as it's the only way to unlock all the extra gear. The reason for that is that because weapons and items don't drop in the game world. Instead, you're interacting with this spooky looking mirror back at the hub to research these items over time. So you might research a new weapon or a new spell, you go off and play a few expeditions for a bit before coming back and the research is complete, giving you a brand new toy to play with. And it does make sense after a little while, but it is a system that the game doesn't ever really take the time to explain to the player, and it just kind of leaves it there for you to find on your own. You only start off with a basic revolver and no light or heavy spells, but once you've looked into researching even some basic gear, is when you've got a much more decent roster to play with. You can eventually unlock a shotgun, a rifle, sniper rifle, automatic rifle, and a hand cannon. Along with a demonic weapon in the form of a crossbow, which reminds me a lot of the Yucca Arrow from Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a super powerful attack which fires out what's more or less like a heat seeking arrow, that then flies around homing in on multiple enemies. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. Then you can upgrade these weapons to improve them even further, like the shotgun for instance can be upgraded to have shells that burn enemies over time, and the auto rifle so it can be fired until it overheats, again causing bonus damage. You can also use this mechanic to research trinkets to get for your prayer, with a relic, a ring, and a fetish, with there being another three slots in total, and some of these are absolute game changers. I mean, there's a really awesome relic that drops a goddamn lightning bolt on weakened enemies, you know, killing them pretty much instantly. There's a ring that leaves behind an explosive orb every time I dashed, which does poison damage and also knocks enemies back. Some of these weapons and spells though are definitely better than others and it did take me a fair bit of time here to find the ones that I really liked. I mean the light and heavy spells are so vastly different in effects that it's almost kind of dramatic how different each one of them can be. Light spells are simple things like lightning bolts or fireballs. But the more handy ones, at least in my experience, include the frost cone which can freeze multiple enemies caught in the blast and leave them wide open to attacks. Alright everyone, chill. Enemies take bonus damage when they're stunned, so even that basic light spell which stuns enemies can be super effective as well. Heavy spells on the other hand linger around a bit, like a fart in a phone booth, and these are pretty interesting as well. Like there's a heavy spell that drops down this giant iron cross, which then shoots lightning bolts at anything that gets close to it. Another one manifests a floating bell in the air, which when shot at sends out a bit of a shockwave stunning nearby enemies, making it pretty awesome at even basic crowd control. Yeah, for whom the bell tolls indeed. And then another less useful one creates this giant frozen sphere around the player, which stops enemies from getting in close. But this one though on the other hand kind of seems like suicide to me, because you need to let enemies get close in the first place to really make it all that effective, and that's like inviting the devil up to your doorstep. As for the weapons though, hands down the best two are the auto rifle and the shotgun. The auto rifle is really useful at medium range, and then as a backup when you want to get in close, swapping out to the shotgun does all the rest of the heavy lifting. It's just that you have to be really close for it to be all that good.
And look, if that ain't a homage to Doom 3 shotgun, then I don't know what is. They're the same picture. And I just can't see that much of a use for those other weapons, especially for the hand cannon and the rifle. I mean, it seems like the rifle's just there to take the piss. The hand cannon's more or less like an SMG, and you have to be neck and neck with an enemy for it to even be all that effective. But the short magazine size combined with the kind of reload speed you'd find in a tactical shooter just makes it feel really underwhelming. Maybe the rifle is better when it gets upgraded, I don't know, and to be honest, I don't really want to know. But I've never just found much of a use for this thing either. It is really make or break kind of stuff though, and I've been utterly fucked over at times when the weapons and the spells I've tried to use have been about as effective as harsh language. The reason for that is because Witchfire is hard, really fucking hard, and even the basic enemy types can mess you up really quickly. It's got a super steep learning curve by design, and for those first few hours it's like being thrown into a washing machine with a bucket of piranhas. At first, there doesn't seem to be any real end in sight to the constant punishment, but the more you play, the more you start to pick up on the way enemies attack and understand their moveset, and eventually you'll start to see a speck of light at the end of that gauntlet. Most damage can be avoided or at least mitigated slightly, but it's still about knowing the timings of enemy attacks. They'll always telegraph their more powerful moves, most of the time anyway. So you've usually got like a second or so to recognize when one of them's incoming and make sure all of your affairs are in order. Even if that enemy isn't in your direct line of sight, a handy icon on your heads up display lets you know when they're gearing up, which is a nice touch and works great, you know, when it actually works like it's supposed to. There's also a high focus on stamina management here in regards to dashing and sprinting with the former really getting the most usage. There's even this mechanic where if you can avoid taking damage, it buffs up your stamina temporarily, along with showing an enemy's weak spot after a dash in the form of a glowing orb that you can shoot to stun them. So there is an emphasis on not getting hit and really trying to master the combat loop. The issue again is that pretty much all of this has to be learned firsthand. I mean, you get some basic explanations for items and weapons in a really basic tutorial, but the only way to really learn how all of this works is going out there and testing it in the field. And the fact that you're going to die quite a lot here until the whole thing clicks, combined with that mechanic of essentially losing all of your progress means that it's really the kind of thing that's going to turn off a lot of people. Upgrading your stats is also universal, and by that I mean regardless of the stat itself, the cost of an upgrade is always increasing across the board. So if you've already put 10 points into stamina for instance, raising your magic ability from nothing is going to cost you as much as it is to keep improving stamina. Does that make sense? And this is really where you can potentially screw yourself over, because Witchfire is one of those games that uses level scaling as opposed to fixed levels for enemies. And that's really often the most frustrating element with Witchfire. It's that sense that you're never really getting any better at it. I mean, you are in the sense that you're unlocking new spells and weapons and learning how to best defeat enemies, but then you're also kind of not because the game is constantly increasing the challenge as well. By adding in tougher enemies like elite variants of the ones you've already fought, or by chucking in more dangerous and elaborate traps, or increasing the likelihood of those calamity events. Almost every time you go back and level up a stat, the game will not only restructure an area, but often add in new threats as well. Like you'll outright see messages saying they've added in some kind of new tough monster into the fray. Oh fuck. And this is just such a weird concept to me, how the game is leveling up with you to the point that it almost seems to nullify the benefits you're getting from leveling up in the first place. And it'd be like playing an MMO where all the enemies in the starting area are kept two levels higher than the player. It makes sense that the game would ramp up in challenge as you move across the map, but the fact that it happens in both the starting areas and that it also seems to be an actual design choice is just kind of baffling. But where Witchfire absolutely shits the bed right now is this over-reliance on enemies with ranged weapons. Whether it be archers, musketeers, grenadiers, or handgunners, the game's always got a bunch of these assholes hanging back and shooting at you from a distance. I'm good. I'm good. There's an enemy type called Assassins, which launch out this sort of flash bomb, which blinds you for a few seconds. And sometimes you can't even see when they've thrown these things out until they go off. 
Grenadiers kind of remind me of the Bruisers from Borderlands. They're hulking dudes in suits of armor that launch explosive projectiles, and they're about as fun to fight as a Rottweiler that barks out sticks of TNT. And I don't even know how to describe the handgunners, but I can tell you one thing, is that that's an absolute misnomer. Honestly, they seem to be more like paladins with explosive weaponry, even popping a protective shield when they're low on health to heal. Oh, fuck. And these ranged enemies are a bit of a pain because most weapons have this mechanic where they don't do as much damage at long range, which is fine. I mean, it's been done to force you to close the distance and engage with enemies. Only that rule doesn't seem to apply to them. And these guys can still hit you with their own weapons regardless of the distance they are. Even when you do get a proper long range weapon like a sniper rifle and can take these guys out from a distance, it's almost a bit of a handicap because looking through the scope of that thing really limits your peripheral vision. I don't know, man, it just seems like a really frustrating abundance of that particular enemy type, and it really bogs down a lot of the combat. So if they do one thing in future updates, they really need to thin out the herd here. Ironically, as a result, the boss fights are actually some of the easiest parts of the game, because at least the boss you fight when you're level 5 is the same boss you're fighting at level 20. Walk away, bitch. Well, at least the first boss anyway. The second one is still a little bit confusing, where this guy has the innate ability to somehow hit you through solid objects. Whoa. Same thing with the Wardens though, who are these Grim Reaper looking dudes who patrol the map at random. And these guys are initially really challenging and almost kind of scary to fight, but then eventually become an outright pushover. And I get it, level scaling is a tough thing to master. It's a fine line between keeping the game challenging and having just the right amount of difficulty, but then if it sways too much in the other direction, then it ends up just being frustrating and removing any long-term reward. This is supposed to be about your character becoming strong enough to take on these super tough supernatural creatures. But it does feel like that power fantasy element is lacking when you're still having to go toe to toe with what's more or less trash mobs who are artificially becoming stronger. I will say though that the second area you unlock is considerably easier to navigate than the first, mostly because in the castle there's a lot more options to break line of sight and funnel the enemies into choke points. But overall, I just think this system needs a bit of a rework, because at the moment it almost feels kind of pointless to try to farm XP and level up, especially if the outcome is that the enemies are just going to get strong alongside of you. Apart from that, there are other minor things I could also bring up and criticize, but again, it's worth noting that the game is constantly being patched and updated. In fact, almost daily it seems. I mean, one complaint I initially had was that you had to manually break down which fire essence in your inventory piece by piece, which was just needlessly time consuming. And while I was working on this review, they've already patched in the option to break all of these down in bulk. Still though, you can genuinely see the potential that Witchfire has. The combat is basically already where it needs to be, at least in terms of the feedback, with only some of the balancing and odd design choices really holding it back at this stage. I have no idea where they're going to be taking this thing in future updates, but either way, I'm really rooting for it. It's the kind of game where every time I get killed, I feel like smashing my keyboard and I end up swearing and cursing the whole thing out, only to instantly go back in for another run and try again. I mean, so half the battle's already won in that I keep coming back. Just get rid of some of those archers, please, and it'll make me want to do it even more.